My instant lizard has blinded them. The He-Man series was something that I grew up with, and as a child I never realized how many scientists there were in this series. Even the main two bad guys, Skeletor and Hordak, both make machines, however my favorite was always Modula. There is something about this scientific genius turned villain that really intrigues us, and today we will take a look into everything that we should know about Modulok's origin both in the animated series and the comic book series. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, Please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. It will transfer your intelligence into mine. Backstory of an evil scientist, Modulok. When it comes to the red, mutated, almost demonic looking scientist, his iconic introduction to the fans of He Man was in the episode titled Mistaken Identity. It was episode number 123 in the animated series He Man, The Masters of the Universe. In this episode, when a new guard is appointed in the Palace of Eternia, he is informed by the senior guards about the prisoners who were kept there. One of the prisoners there was the mad scientist Galen Nycroft. Galen Nycroft was a man of science who took a turn for evil and used his scientific prowess to harm people instead. The new guard was told by the older guard not to worry much about Galen Nycroft because while he is in prison, he will not let his hands on the test tubes, and as long as he does not get his hands on them, everything will be alright, but little did they know, Galen Nycroft had figured out a way to escape the prison without getting his hands on the test tubes. We see that once the guards had gone away, on his signal, a little red bat-like creature showed up in his cell. This aid had carried a crucial piece for his machine and handed it over to Galen Nycroft. Galen then basically zapped a huge machine into his prison cell out of nowhere, and then once he put the tiny piece in the machine it came to life. It is clear that Galen has been working on this experiment for a while now and he is not going to let anything stop his escape from the prison. Once the machine came to life he stepped into it and after a few seconds out came the demonic Modulok that we know so well. Once out of the machine, Modulok broke apart the wall of the prison and escaped leaving guards shocked and astounded. Now that he was outside, Modulok went to a secret lair, where he reached out to our favorite meme villain, Skeletor. Modulok wanted to be a part of the evil horde, because as he is an evil man, it would be nice to be a part of the most villainous organization of Etheria. However, Skeletor wanted nothing to do with him. In Skeletor's eyes, Modulok is just a puny mortal scientist who is not worthy of being a part of the evil horde. And so Modulok decides to prove his evilness and his worth as a villain. In order to do that, he decided that the best course of action would be to defeat He-Man in a way. Now, while Modulok was out and about thinking about how to get He-Man, he overheard a conversation between a young couple, Farin and Kareel. Kareel admired He-Man a lot, and Farin, her boyfriend, was so jealous. So instead of sitting down and talking about it, Farin decided that it would be best to pretend to be He-Man, because then Kareel would like him more. So he played an elaborate ruse and pretended to be busy whenever He-Man would be busy. He even went inside a cave and lured He-Man after him, knowing that Kareel would be a follower them, Kareel saw Farine go into the cave and He-Man came out of the same. So she assumed that Farin was He-Man. She confronted Farine about it and Farine said he was because of course he did. Modulok overheard this snippet of the conversation and decided to kidnap Farine. He knew that if he could present the real identity of He-Man to Skeletor, he would certainly be accepted in the evil horde. When Farine repeatedly tells him that he is not He-Man, Modulok refuses to believe it which leads to even more confusion. Finally, the actual He-Man that is Prince Adam shows up and rescues Farine. However, Modulok was left there in the cave for the royal guards to pick him up and our scientist villain ended up escaping. The next time we see Modulok is when He-Man and Duncan end up finding Roboto. Roboto was on the ship and this ship crash landed on Eternia. Seeing the dire condition of the poor robot, Duncan decided to help him out for the best of his ability. This led to him taking Roboto back to the royal palace and working on fixing him. Now when Roboto finally woke up, he was astounded by the place and the creatures he was surrounded by. So Understandably, he wanted to scan the people around him whenever he scanned documents. He designed that Duncan was rather intelligent. Remember this as this would be relevant later. After this sort of greeting and scanning, Roboto was introduced to everyone in the royal palace and Modulox 8, that little bat thing that was at the palace when Duncan and Adam were discussing Roboto. Hearing about how amazing Roboto is, Modulox made a hasty decision to kidnap him immediately, and that is exactly what he did. When Modulox kidnapped Roboto, he marveled at the machinery magic that Roboto brought to the 
table, and once he was done being rather excited about it all, he decided to reprogram Roboto to have him help him out in his evil deeds. Even though Roboto did not want to get reprogrammed at all, Modulok's knowledge of cybernetics overpowered him and he soon ended up being his evil assistant. Now, Adam and Duncan had no idea that Roboto was kidnapped, so you can imagine how betrayed they felt when they saw Roboto being evil in everything. However, when they follow Roboto, they end up fighting about Modulok and his involvement in this mess. With the help of this realization, Adam and Duncan attacked Modulok. However, as Modulok had Roboto by his side, he was able to defeat both of them. Once defeated, Modulok remembered how Duncan had a high intelligence, as Roboto had said, so Modulok made a special instrument that he could connect into Duncan's head and get all the knowledge that he had into the cybernetic head that Modulok created. This process was understandably horrifying, and by this point, the rewiring that Roboto had gone through was growing weaker, and Roboto was able to break out of that brainwashing. Modulok was obviously about to overpower him and dealt some serious damage to Roboto with his high-tech machinery. However, despite all of that, Roboto was able to free Adam before he passed out. Adam was able to save Duncan and defeat Modulok, which led to them going back to the Eternian Royal Palace to save Roboto. Now, given that everything that Modulok has done so far seems to fail, would it be completely unreasonable? If you were to think that he would not be able to get a place on Skeletor's team, well, it won't be unreasonable, but somehow he managed to get it. In the episode titled Here, There's Skeletors Everywhere, where Skeletor steals a duplication machine that Duncan had made and makes a whole army of himself to invade Eternia with, we also get to see Modlock as a part of his team. Honestly, it is good for him that he finally got the attention of his Skeletor senpai, but we genuinely do not know how he managed to do that. ...that you can send an entire fleet of ships through it to invade and conquer... Modulok's treacherous journey into Horde. Now, you know when you have a crush on someone and you really, really, really like them, but then when you get to know them, the crush and the admiration that you had towards that person just fades. Something similar to that happened to Modulok. Modulok clearly was very interested in being a part of Skeletor's team, but when he did become part of his team, he realized that things were not as nice as he thought they would be. I suppose he had assumed that because he was a man of science and he was always making the high-tech gadgets that Skeletor could use for evil, Skeletor would give him the respect that he truly deserved. But that could not have been far from the truth at one point. Modulok built this entire machine that can create a doorway to any place that one could want. This obviously would allow Skeletor to invade any place that he wanted, and this time, the place was Etheria. Why? Etheria had Hordak, whom Skeletor hated with a passion. Once Modulok had finished making this machine, it was expected that Modulok would get some praise, but when he was mocked cruelly by Skeletor, Modulok decided that enough was enough, and and he would instead go to Hordak. Hordak was a scientist himself, and Modulok thought that Hordak would be a better person to work with. So instead of giving Skeletor his two weeks' notice, Modulok opened the gate to Etheria and stepped in before the portal gate closed. However, Skeletor was able to step in and hollow behind him because obviously Skeletor did not want the machine to go to Hordak. Modulok went to Hordak and presented his skills to him. Hordak was very appreciative of the idea and Modulok's skills. Hordak even made him the scientist of the Horde, which is a great achievement achievement for Modulok. However, while Hordak was preparing his army to invade Eternia, He-Man, She-Ra, and Skeletor showed up. As it turns out, when Modulok went away with a machine and Skeletor followed, He-Man and She-Ra were notified about Skeletor's arrival in Etheria. Hearing about that, they decided to go capture him, but Skeletor sang like a canary and told him everything from the machine to the plan of invading Etheria and whatnot. So learning that the sisters' planets would be in danger, the two heroes decided to make a truce with Skeletor to go and get the machine back, but Skeletor broke the truce and went away to do it himself. When He-Man and She-Ra learn about it, they follow him, and then the showdown happens. The machine was turned off and seized, and Hordak ended up losing the army that had already gone through the portal. As the planet failed, Hordak was very upset with Modulok and decided to demote him from the position of Horde scientist to Horde cook, but Modulok ended up earning his positions again. Modulok did so when he ended up designing a machine that could control the weather. Using this machine, Modulok was able to to control the weather of Etheria and create blizzards and hurricanes. However, he wanted, with that, he targeted the two countries of the Selkies and Snow. He knew that there was some political unrest between the two and using his machine, he created a blizzard in the country of Selkie. The Selkies assumed this was the doing of Frosta, the queen of the land of snow, but then Modulok turned the snow back, making it poisonous for any and every animal who comes in contact with it. Modulok's plan had almost proved to be fatal for everyone in the Selkie nation. Frosta reached out to her friend 
Shira, and together the two women decided to investigate. During their investigation, they came across the black snow and realized that something was fishy about it. However, before they could do anything about it, Frosta was kidnapped. Modlock intentionally blew Frosta away from Shira with the help of a blizzard and placed her in the hands of the Selkies. The Selkies captured Frosta and put her in the cell because they were very sure that it was actually Frosta who was making the black snow and the toxins it produced. Frosta tried her best to make them understand that she was not the one at fault. However, the Selkies were not interested in listening to anything that she had to say. They wanted a war to solve everything and they were willing to go as far as they could for it. On the other hand, Modulox sent Multibot to fight with Shira. However, when Shira noticed how simple-minded Multibot is, she used that against the Multibot and got the information from him. Multibot told him everything from who was ordering him to attack Shira, where his boss was, what his boss was doing, everything. Hearing that, Shira quickly made her way back to the weather wheel the machine Modulock had made to create the black snow and captured Modulock right before he could run away. She got the reversal formula from him and put it to use immediately, which turned the snow white. This change in the color of the snow was noticed by the people of the Selkies and the people of snow who were just about to get into a war. Frosta had escaped from the cell to stop the war and she arrived just in time to build up an ice barrier between the two groups to prevent them from attacking. When she was sure she would fail, that is when the white snow started falling, followed by Shira, who came flying the weather wheel with the culprits tied up in it. Thankfully, this stopped the two kingdoms from getting into a fight that they did not need to be in. The last we see of Modulok in the series is when Hordak and Skeletor are both given the task of finding the two Earth children accidentally teleported into their planet. These kids were high on Christmas spirit, which was a good thing, and Horde Prime wanted nothing to do with that, so he wanted Hordak and Skeletor to capture the kids. This was obviously meant to be a competition, so everyone rallied their troops to capture the kids. As a part of Hordak's team, Modulok was even seen trying to get those kids. However, in the end, Skeletor ends up saving the kids because he ended up getting affected by the Christmas spirit. Modulok's Panel Parades If you thought that Modulok was only on the animated series, then I have to tell you that you guessed wrong. It turns out that Modulok was also in the comic book He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. In the comic books, he was known as Galen Nykoff. He mostly committed a bunch of petty crimes, nothing too big, and eventually he was caught and put in prison. When there, he decided to concoct this potion to give him extra strength as opposed to making a machine. As we see in the animated series, however, the potion went wrong and instead of being strong, Galen ended up becoming Modulok who can break his body into several parts and has two heads. He went from looking like a demon in the animated series to a cybernetic demon-looking robot in the comic book panels. He did have a run-in with Skeletor and Modulok did not like him very much. He wanted to destroy Skeletor completely, which led to him turning to Hordak. There, he proposed a plan which was boiled down to him infiltrating the castle Grayskull, and then from the forbidden weapons we see he could steal a weapon of mass destruction and use that to give Hordak the victory that he deserved. Hordak was happy with the plan and decided to go along with it. To infiltrate the Castle Grayskull, Modulok basically sent each part of his body to the different members of the royal family. All of them brought the strange pieces together to Duncan and he eventually suggested that he should take them to the Castle Grayskull and ask the sorceress about it. This way, Modulok ended up being inside a castle. Skeletor somehow got to learn about Modulok's entry into the castle and he was not very happy about it. So he set out to go meet with Modulok and make sure it was he who got to rule Eternia and not Modulok. Modulok on the other hand, had already gotten his hands on the weapon and came out of the castle with it. But once he came outside, Hordak and Skeletor were both facing off. Thanks to the weapon Modulok had stolen, it became almost impossible for either He-Man or Skeletor to hurt Hordak and Modulok, which made the battle a bit difficult. But as the sorceress had given He-Man a power booster and Modulok was way too emotional and got out of the force field of the weapon that was protecting him and charged towards Skeletor, Hordak and Modulok both got defeated. They both had to make a hasty escape to prevent capture. The next time we see Modulok, he was created the Multibot with one mission to kill He-Man. He asked Hordak to give his Multibot a chance and when Hordak did, however, he was rather pleased. No matter how many times He-Man ripped Multibot apart, it would put itself back together and keep attacking He-Man. However, Hordak wanted to be the one to kill He-Man, so instead of watching from the sidelines, he decided to join in on the fight to go and attack He-Man himself. However, that is when we learned the truth, Modulok had designed Multibot with two goals 
kills. One was to kill He-Man, and the other was to kill Hordak. With Hordak showing up to Eternia, it just made Modulok's fan easier. However, after Hordak shows up, Multibot refuses to let him kill He-Man, which leads to Hordak destroying Multibot himself. Right before Hordak could attack He-Man, his friends showed up with magnets that they had brought to dismantle Multibot's programming. This led Multibot to go from Program 1 to Program 2 and start attacking Hordak instead. This made Hordak realize what a treacherous man Modulok is, and Hordak left for Etheria, promising to see the end of Modulok. But this was not the last time we got to see Modulok in a comic book panels. In the Masters of the Universe revelation that came out in 2021, in a brief flashback, we do get to see Modulok, making it evident that he would get to see his misadventures in the new reboot of the He-Man comic book series. There must be some way I can prove myself to Skeletor. Marvelous Verdict Modulok is the best example of a character who could have done great had they gone down the best path. He has every potential to be like Duncan and maybe even better, however, because he wanted power, money, and fame that set him down this terrible path, which resulted in him becoming this terrible, demonic-looking villain. However, there is something about his misadventures that is rather fun to watch, and I personally cannot wait to see more. If you enjoyed this video, click on the like button and comment below about which other movie reviews you would want to watch. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel.